In today's episode, we are finally going wide. Alright, so today I'm going to be installing the Ojin fenders on the FTRX7. Uh, when it comes to body kits and wide body kits, it's usually personal preference as to what you like. But for my purpose, I'm building a race car that can be street driven. So I don't want anything ridiculous. I know when I mentioned I'm going wide body, a lot of you guys are like, oh, go with the Rocket Bunny, go with like a Veil side. And my first response to that is no. To me, Rocket Bunnies and Veil sides are way, way too wide for any RX-7s. Unless you're building like a full-time attack car or a drift car where you're actually going to use the extra width that you're gonna gain by going over fenders. So let me just explain what I mean by that. The origin fenders and most of the over fenders made by Aria Mamia is about 25-50 meters of width. For the orange origin fenders I'm going with today, I got the front one sitting here. These are 25 millimeter extension on the front and the rears are 50 millimeters on the back. Check this out. Look how much it sticks out just with 15 millimeters. It might be a little hard to see, but I can put my four fingers in there. That's the amount of space I'm gaining with a regular over fenders. Now, if you go with a rocket bunny kit, these basically double in width. These are 15 millimeters. Rocket Bunny's 100 millimeters of over fenders. If you do quick mass in your head, 100 millimeters, that's like four inches, which means if you're running like a 18 by 10 inch tires in the back, you're going to have to run 18 by 14 or 18 by 13 and run tire sizes upwards of like 355, 345, something ridiculous like that. I can't think of many applications where you're gonna need that much tire in the back of a FTR 7 So whenever somebody asks me, why didn't I go with Rocket Bunny or Veil side, uh, my response is I'm not building a show car and I'm not gonna put two inch spacers just to fill that extra gap with 255 tires. To me, that makes no sense. You're only doing for the looks and to me personally, Rocket Bunny on FTR 7 looks ugly as hell. I think it destroys the streamlined look of the car unless you go with like the RX-3 front end rocket bunny on FTRX7. I actually like that look. A lot of RX7 time attack cars seeing around the world run a square setup front and back, 285 or so 295, sometimes in the 300s. But that's pretty much the maximum tire width I've seen people go with. So to me, Veilside Rocket Bunny didn't make any sense. And I'm not saying that Rocket Bunny kit doesn't look good. Uh, I think it looks great on like a FRS BRZ application, which to me makes more sense. Because if you put like a 2JZ in a BRZ, right, and you're making 2000 horsepower, or whatever <laughs> ridiculous amount of power you make with those uh, engines, then you might need 305 or 325s in the back. That makes complete sense. But on the RX7, that's gonna be making 500 horsepower. Uh, I don't think Rocket Bunny kit makes any sense to me. So that's my little rant about going with Rocket Bunny kits and the reason why I will never do something like that on a car that is performance oriented. If you're building a show car, go ahead. You know, run 265 tires on 18 by 10 and a half, stretch the shit out of it, put two inch spacers, tuck that in, and uh, you got a cool looking car, right? That's just my opinion. Don't get offended by this, guys. I'm just explaining the reason why I am not going with a Rocket Bunny kit the reason why I'm going with something more functional, which is, I mean, which kind of ties down to the LS engine, which also ties down to the body kit. So let me explain what's gonna happen today. First of all, I'm gonna be chopping up the rear fenders. I'm gonna cut this open, and then I'm gonna pull the inner layers out, weld it, uh, and then I'm gonna fiberglass it, start filling these fenders front and back, and also have a side skirt that came from Japan. I got a lot of friends over in Japan, of course, who send me parts here and there in the container ships. They ship cars and they were able to hook me up with a custom side skirt. I don't even know what brand this is. So if you guys know Overbrand, please do let me know 
looks like uh, it was owned by US Air Force guy in the past. So the reason why I got this custom side skirt is because I don't like the origin side skirt. So what I'm gonna have to do is mount these fenders and kind of blend in the fenders with the side skirt so that it looks like it's one piece. And I also don't like the bolted in look. I, I, to me, it looks kind of unfinished and incomplete. So what I'm gonna do is put the over fenders and mold everything in. I've never really done bodywork on any cars, so it'll be a good experience for me. It'll be fun, it'll be entertaining. Uh, I don't really care if I mess it up because it's a race car, not a show car, but I'm gonna give it a try and see how it comes out. So what I'm gonna do now is grab my angle grinder, cut this fender off, pull this out, and weld it in. All right guys, so the top layer has been chopped off. What I'm gonna do now is take this part completely off and then start cutting slits in here, bend it upwards, and then I'm gonna weld it to this piece right here. So I'm gonna sand this down and then uh, sand this down a little bit too so I have a clean surface for welding and uh, everything should look good. Alright guys, so cutting has been done and I have hammered out the inner layer out. Uh, as you can see, this was hit by the previous owner. That's why it was all banged up and dead. So I was going to try to push it out just slightly. I don't really care because it's going to be covered by the over fender anyways. What I'm going to do now is just weld up these little tabs onto the fender itself. Cut off the rest of it, clean it up. All right guys, so here is my shitty welding job. I just tacked the plates together so that it stays in place and kind of cut the excess off. It was a little hard getting into these corners because the piece was sticking far out and I don't have a thick welder, it's a MIG welder. So, you know, I had a hard time getting in there. So I cut off the uh, excess metal and now I'm gonna go ahead and weld this up and grind it off. All right guys, welding has finished and uh, you can see that I have grounded off some of the sharper pieces that's exposed so it doesn't hit the tire and uh, puncture the tire. But if it does, if this area does hit the tire, I probably have bigger issue than tire that's being punctured. Um, overall, it looks good. It's a little rough, but like I said before, I'm gonna fiberglass this so all these holes are sealed up. Make sure you do that. So you don't have any water penetrating into it. That would be very bad idea, idea. You have water inside the fenders and it starts rusting. And speaking of waters inside the fenders, I have this piece here, which is a indicator I believe it was for left and right side in the rear. Um, the new fenders come with a hole that would replace the indicator onto the oversized fenders, but I don't like this look, so I, I'm gonna cover it up. I started fiberglassing it over, so I'm not gonna be running any indicators in the rear, but I don't wanna leave this hole open. So what I did was I cut off a piece of metal from scrap metal that I took off from the fender piece, which is sitting there now, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this piece in here, and then fiberglass over that. And in addition to that, 
I also have mirror that is going to be deleted. I'm going to move this mirror up here. I'm going to do some custom GT style uh, mirror pieces. So what I did was I cut open like a penny size metal piece that's going to go in here. I'm going to weld that off shut and uh, basically make it nice and flat with body filler. On the back side, I have a uh, wiper washer nozzle, I believe it was. Took that out. I'm going to weld that off shut. And over here on the driver side, I have the rear wiper hole. This is also going to be welded off with a plate and uh, filled up with body feeder. So I don't have any excess body pieces sticking out of the car. All right, guys, so this is day after. Just a quick update on all the holes that's being filled out. The uh, wiper hole has been welded, sanded down. The uh, antenna hole is sanded down. Up here, wind washer nozzle has been welded and sanded down. And fender, of course, has been welded and sanded down just slightly so that there's no sharp edges. But like I said, uh, I will be putting down fiberglass on this, which is what I'm going to do right now. The rear, uh, don't, don't worry about this messy primer, I don't really care. It's going to be re-sprayed the whole car, or wrapped, and there's going to be uh, over fenders that's going to be covering this up completely. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to mix some fiberglass, cover this, and uh, cover this area. I'll probably do two layers of fiberglass here and show you the result. So this here is the stuff I'm using today. Bondo hair. This is basically fiberglass with bits of hair pieces in it so it holds nice and strong. But can we talk a little bit about how disgusting this is? It looks like imagine your shower that's been clogged up for like four years and you finally declogged it and the hair came out of it. That's exactly what it looks like. It's disgusting, it smells bad, but it's a two part basically epoxy type setup so you get the resin out and you apply the hardener mix it up nice and well and you apply to your car All right, guys, I'm back. And uh, actually, it's been about a few weeks since I started chopping off the body of the FTRX7 to go wide body. Let me just say that I have underestimated the amount of time and energy it takes to do body work on a car. And that is exactly the reason why I've never done it before. And also the reason why I wasn't so excited to get into it. Uh, but let me just say that because it's gonna take so much time, it's gonna have to cut this video here and show you a progress update on how to prep your car to go wide body. And I'm gonna do another video in the future showing you exactly how to fit the body panels on the car. But to give you a quick update, I have welded a lot of the holes on the car. You have already seen that. I have laid down Bondo on it. Fiberglass looks like this, which doesn't really matter because uh, it's gonna be covered with the white fenders. I've also bonded the front mirror area. Let me just show you though, before I end the video, how it fits. Um, this is Ogen, OEM, or should I say, uh, non ripoff, origin, genuine over fenders. But you can see there's a lot of gaps still. And uh, the front part doesn't exactly fit. There's also another gap there. Side skirts that's not from Ogin is going to take a lot of customization. So I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time 
chopping things off, shaving things off, and kind of perfecting the wide body kit to fit on my car. And to be honest, I don't really have the time to do that right now because I really want to get the car up and running and get it tuned, install fuel pump, fuel injectors. I also want to do the gauges inside to get it up and ready for the truck season. So I might not even get to the installation of body panels this season. I will see what I can do. But for now, I'm going to just stop the video here and give you an update on the white body in the future so that I can concentrate more on getting the car started. So thanks again for watching the video, guys. I hope that was helpful for those of you who are interested in going wide body with their car. It's really the same process for any of the cars out there. You cut it, weld it, fiberglass it. So thanks again for watching the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. See you in the next episode. Peace.